Hello loves, I'm going to have another opportunity to share with you my experience and wisdom during ascension process. Yes. 10 common signs of spiritual awakening. I have not touched base on this subject thus far in this this year so i just want to touch base it's very I, I mean it's going back to the basics however it's always great to uh remind oneself of the spiritual adventure and the spiritual awakening and where are you currently at kind of like a self check-in kind of thing and i was reading this article um on the chopra center and i'm thinking it's be it's from deepak chopra you guys know Deep, deepak chopra chopra he's like part of the new age movement he's like um He's like all into the alternative medicine type of gig. Uh, yeah. He's like an Indian from New Delhi. But anyways, I think that's his website. But the creator name is Tamara Lyncher. She's a certified instructor in meditation. <laughs> so just, you know, you guys know what spiritual awakening is. In my sense, spiritual awakening is when you come to realize who you are uh, and, and what your purpose is in this lifetime right so when you become aware that you are more than just this body and you're like what's going on so you question that that is to me a spiritual awakening in my terminology how do you describe it please let me know <laughs> maybe you can ha you have better way of saying it it's kind of like um going from like a gremlin to like an angel <laughs> right that's a speed that's a change of species a change of kind um well, in this article, um, she writes that according to Deep, Deepak Chopra, awakening happens when you are no longer living in a dream world where you filter everything through your ego and focusing on the future and the past. Instead, you have an almost simultaneous awareness of your individual self and the connection between that and everything else. It's essentially what I said, right, girl? You're very, very, very right? It's like, so he's, this is really great. A metaphor of wave in the ocean. Uh, you are the wave, you are the ocean. You have the ability to maintain both separation and connection simultaneously at a different level of spiritual evolution. So that's pretty cool. I enjoyed it. Um, I did create a video on my spiritual awakening video, uh, which can be triggered through many various uh, stimulus from the external environment or internal environment. It can be from disease. It can be from, you know, a death. It can be uh, anything, right? It can be really, it can be a lot of things that can trigger it. Um, and I made one and it's really long and... Um, I probably can link you here, sure, I'm not sure, but check it out, Just, it says my spiritual awakening, my awakening story. Um, now this was pretty cool, she says she gave examples of awakened people, um, do you know any awakened people? I know uh, on this list it has Russell Brand, which as you know, he has his own YouTube channel and he is woke and his agenda is definitely very interesting because coming from like the Hollywood scene and the actor scene and knowing that everything in this re in Hollywood is programmed for our for people, normal people are, they go to the movies to get programmed by those films. And he was part of that. Um, and now he's awakened like that. That experience is very unique. So I would definitely recommend watching some of his videos. I did watch his video with Candace, which she's like one of the like Republicans, uh, black American Republicans, who's like really for Trump and very political, very great. But Russell Brand does have his channel. He does, I should watch that one. He recently did with that Logan Paul guy or the guy who you guys know him about him another one is Jim Carrey we all know about the story of Jim Carrey we, he he woke up and he started talking and spilling about secrets of the Illuminati and you know all this and he's like enlightened and you know it's really interesting how he has managed that transition however he is committed he's committed to the message and he is in a sense a light worker meaning that he's trying to tell the truth or expose the truth to people who are who can't see it uh, but like i already told you loves like that for me is unnecessary because if your eyes awaken then you can see the truth like you could you could it's like right there however that's what he's doing he just recently made a movie so that i would be very interesting to know what all the subtext of that movie is that new film i think he's like a penguin or something i can't i don't know but oprah winfrey now oprah winfrey is definitely part of the uh illuminati or masonry or whatever she's she has that power and She's playing that game. So when she's doing her agenda, her agenda is definitely very subtle. And you can tell right off the bat how um, she disguises the information and her rhetoric and the way she speaks. Uh, very interesting. So any 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 woken people you know? Um, yeah, um, for sure. Let me see. Other people who are woke. Hmm, that's a good question. I should just make another video. Just entirely of people who are woke. <laughs> oh, RuPaul. RuPaul's woke. AF. Oh my God. Do you know RuPaul? He's like 
the queen of drag. And I'm like so like excited to say that, who cares? Um, but she definitely is a very interesting character because her agenda is being an entertainer, but while entertaining you, giving you pieces of spiritual pearls of wisdom or pearls of wisdom, uh, however, it's still uh, masking her agenda and the agenda of the occult into the message, right? So she made like a, a series about AJ and the Queen or whatever. So she's pushing the agenda of ch children, uh, Transgender, like labeling children or not knowing the children's gender, right? Because that girl is like playing like a boy or whatever, playing with gender. Um, yeah, she's like normalizing that and et cetera, et cetera, right? So, like, her agenda is definitely that transgender and the sexual stuff and kids and blah, blah, blah. But she is woke, uh, or he's woke for sure. Yeah, very interesting, right? I'm, I need to totally make it. it give, me, give me some ideas so I can talk about them. Because these are key players or pawns, they're, they're pawns. Well, some of them are pawns, some of them are like bishops or like, you know, other chess pieces, horse knights. But they have wisdom that they share, but they also have different intention when they share it, right? Okay, um, so let's talk about these super fast because this video is already getting longer. Um, one, observing your patterns. That's automatically when you start, you start asking yourself, why am I doing this? Like you start asking yourself, why is this job important? Why am I studying in university something I don't want to study anymore? Uh, why am I working a corporation? Like you start observing your patterns in your routine and seeing how that incorporates into your, uh, yeah. And I mean, yeah, it goes along here. He's, uh, well, some of the question is, why do you get angry so often? Do you really need this much red meat in your diet? You start your patterns, right, which is your diet. Why do you attract so much drama, which is very interesting, right? You go from autopilot to conscious pilot, right? That's the idea. Number two, feeling a sense of connection. Very, very interesting because you start uh, wondering if you have a connection. Now, in regards to this, this connection is that we are all human and we're all suffering, right? Essentially, that's how I come uh, to understanding this. Uh, when you're awakened and you're like, oh, well, I'm part of everything. So that's pretty interesting. Um, with connection, so in regards to this, if you loves want to uh, take or learn my spiritual ritual or connecting to source, connecting to my higher self, spiritual ritual routine that I do in the mornings. I can definitely share that with you. It's very intense, it's very practical, and it can get you immediate results. The benefits are amazing. Yes, I'm plugging in my own digital discourse here, <laughs> connecting with source, connecting with your higher self. Uh, and I, I mean, it's been like 10 years of all the knowledge of the meditation techniques that I've done, yoga, through spiritual wisdom, uh, through everything that I've learned, I've definitely mixed in a lot of techniques into this ritual and I'm very proud of it and I've seen results and I know that if I'm able to uh, establish a relationship to, you know, higher source, I mean, my higher self and source and immortal, and the immortal realm beings of love and light, then you can also take part in that if you want a, <clears throat> a structure and then a way to make it your own, right? Because essentially that's what it is. Um, but yeah, definitely... Follow the link so you can get your free gift, sign up, and then I will send you a link to the discourse if you like to take it. Uh, but it's very beneficial. It's, it has a lot of information and uh, you will learn a lot. And the best thing is it's more practical and the purpose of the Connecting the Source Digital Discourse is for you to establish a connection with Source and your higher self with the intention of not using that spiritual routine. You need it as a foundation to understand, to understand <laughs> the ego voice and your higher self voice because those are what's within us. And when you can differentiate from those two, then you have established a connection with your higher self because you can, you'll understand and know which voice is talking to you uh, deep inside. And then you could do this technique anywhere and everywhere. And it's so, so amazing. I, I, promise you, you will not be dissatisfied with this information and spiritual routine. I would share it on here, but no, no, honey. Mm -mm. That's knowledge, experience, wisdom, and the routine is so amazing that I just can't give it away for free like that. Like, no, no, that took time, <laughs> okay? And I've been using it for a couple of weeks now after I've like been able to gather and synthesize all the information and experience. And because I know already I have a connection and I already have that establishment, um, it was just way easier for me to, whenever I started practicing in the morning or whenever I wake up, it was just so easy for me to just connect, right? Establish that connection instantaneously uh, because 
already already had the, the information. So I'm pretty sure it definitely helps. So it's a ritual, it's a routine. It's my spiritual ritual routine to connect to my higher self. And if I have any questions, if I want any ideas or any concepts, I ask and then they come to me. Uh, and you have to know which voice is talking. So that's the, the purpose of it. So yeah, feeling a sense of connection with anything and everything. Whew. That was a plug-in. <laughs> Number three, letting go of attachment. Now, this one's a really hard one, even though it is. Um, we start letting go of the, the ego, right? We, we start disidentifying with the ego, and that's pretty much a lot of a Buddhist teaching, right? I'm vegan, I'm a yogi, I'm always late. These, these concepts, these belief systems, we detach ourselves from them, and that's definitely part of it. Uh, finding inner peace. Yes, that's another one. A lot of people take away the drama. A lot of people are like, okay, I need to go back in nature. Uh, right? It's just, Dalai Lama describes inner peace like stubbing his toe. He still experiences an emotional charge but in the fleeting, but it's, it is fleeting, which is a very interesting way of saying it. Number five, increasing your intuition. Now, this is where that my spiritual uh, ritual routine does help develop your intuition because... A lot of people can't differentiate the voices, um, right, the ones in your head. <laughs> so um, the higher the vibration, we, the frequency and the vibration that we, we increase our frequency and vibration, we are able to distinguish which one is lower and which one's higher very much. So mm -hmm, I totally agree on that one. You guys love that one. Number six is having synchronicity. This one's very popular in the spiritual community, having synchronicities. Um, I definitely, when I came to Tokyo, I had a lot of synchronicities. Everything was just lining up the way it was, um, which was super interesting. That didn't have that many synchronicities. When I started with Moldavai, I also had a lot of synchronicities because you come aware and then your intuition is developed and you're like, oh, wow, like this is connecting. You're on the right track, right? Have you experienced any synchronicities right now? This, this, this right now for me is such a major synchronicity. I can't even sh share like how grateful I am that I'm able to do this right now and share this with you loves and create a rainbow love community of like uh, high vibrational beings and beings that who want to remind themselves of who they are and share that with everyone. Oh, I just can't. I can't. <laughs> uh, number seven, increasing your compassion. Yes. Increasing your compassion. When you realize that people have their own choice, that's the idea, right? Then you're like, wow, you want to experience that. That's you're sharing your compassion. Um, right. Self-kindness is what it is, a sense of common humanity. Yeah, totally. Number eight, removing fear of death. Now, this one is such a hard one, um, but because of my spiritual awakening of the dark night of the soul, this was like, king king, like either you choose what you need to choose or you're gonna die. <laughs> Meaning like, you're gonna probably join the Illuminati. Like that's pretty much what was gonna occur. Um, but removing fear of death is definitely part of the self-mastery, part of the ascension process, is letting go of the, the fear of death. And that is a process that I'm working on right now. It's been 10 years since I've known about, you know, trying to transmute, trying to learn about the, the, the fear of death. And I talked about that in the fear uh, last week, so that was pretty interesting. Number nine, increasing authenticity. Yes, you start being yourself because it's like way easier. Your self-worth, you start gaining self-worth. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty interesting, right? Yeah, I think increasing your authenticity is definitely a, a, like a core value, rainbow, right? Rainbow is like the core values and authenticity is the A for sure, honey. Flourishing. Awaken people have the level of well-being. Number 10 is flourishing. Awaken people have the level of well-being that seems to be more consistent, uh, which, you know, after I awakened, I can definitely see that occurring, uh, even though it's still an emotional world so these 10 most common awakening symptoms and signs i think they're pretty accurate um and hit major key points in the development of the spiritual awakening uh what do you love to think about it uh any one of these are your favorite which one was your favorite of the spiritual awakening are you awakened are you not awakened um i definitely like feeling sense of connection because like i told you even though no matter where in the world you are that connection is so strong that you could like just see yourself in everything and so it's like so hard to go and just full of anger full of judgment because it's like essentially you're like mad at yourself or like <laughs> you know you don't like yourself and it's like honey i like myself <laughs> i like you <laughs> regardless i think that was my favorite and being authentic i mean that one took me a while but those are top, my top favorite. But yeah, this is, um, what do you guys think about that? If you're interested in my, in the digital course of, uh, spiritual, uh, of learning about my spiritual 
ritual routine to connect to my higher self, then definitely follow the link below, down, uh, f sign up, get your free ebook, guidebook of uh, the ABCs of manifestation, a little bitty guide, uh, a little bitty guide to manifesting your life you desire. Super cute, super easy, and then I will send you an email in regards to the digital course. So, yay, I'm so excited. I will see you later. Bye.